Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Xiaomi 11T Pro. Now I must admit, it does feel like there's a new Xiaomi, Poco, Redmi, Mi, actually not Mi anymore, they've dropped that branding, but a new one of these phones every sort of five minutes. It is kind of hard to keep track, but this is basically not the flagship because the uh, Mi 11 Ultra from about five, six months ago is still the top of the line phone, which costs like a grand. This 11T Pro will cost you about 600 pounds and it sits on top of the new 11T and the 11T Lite. I think that's right. And so for 600 quid, this goes up against the likes of the OnePlus 9 or perhaps their upcoming 9T. And it packs in some pretty impressive specs, including a Snapdragon 888, a 120Hz AMOLED screen with a 1000 nit peak brightness, and also Gorilla Glass Victus on the front. Then around the back, we have this triple camera setup with a 108 megapixel main lens, along with an ultra wide and a two times telemacro. We also get some great sounding stereo speakers, which have been tuned by Harman Kardon, as well as a very fast side fingerprint reader, uh, which is built into the power button. Although I found it perhaps a little too sensitive as it would often unlock when I put my hand in my pocket. Now on the inside, we have a very healthy sized 5,000 million power battery, uh, which gets me a full day easily and by about 11 p.m. I still have a good 30% of my battery left. Uh, so very good battery life, but really the big headline is actually this guy, this 120 watt hypercharger. And apparently, according to Xiaomi, this will charge your phone from zero to 72% in just 10 minutes and not to 100 in 17. That's insane and sounds a bit like a challenge. So with about 1% on the battery, I plugged it in, set my timer, and you can see straight away from this charging animation, just how quick this is gonna be. So 10 minutes in and we're already at 72%, which is actually bang on what Xiaomi claimed, even though we did start at 1%. 95% charged at the 15 minute mark. And actually just before 16 minutes 30, it's fully charged, 100%. Not too shabby. That is very impressive, but my first thought was, are we just gonna destroy the battery life by charging it that fast? every day. Well, according to Xiaomi, they've built in over 30 safety features with the battery and also it has this uh, TUV Rhineland fast charge safety certification. Uh, but they also say that over a two year period or so, about 800 uh, cycles of charging, you'll still have 80% of your capacity left, uh, which considering just how fast that is, and that's, well, if you charge it once a day, a bit over two years, that's not too bad. Now design wise, this is very similar to the 11 series earlier this year, and it's a fairly understated style, aside from that pretty big camera module on the back. I have to say though, the back cover does feel quite plasticky to the touch, and also it picks up fingerprints and greasy smudges really easily. So I reckon I would actually go with the Moonlight White version of this instead of this Meteorite Grey, but you'll probably want to put a case on it anyway. So more importantly, this screen. And it's a definite highlight of the phone because while we do only get a full HD plus resolution, not quad HD, we do get this lovely AMOLED panel, Dolby Vision HDR support, 120 Hertz refresh, and a very impressive 480 Hertz touch sampling rate. So particularly for gamers, you'll get a more instant response to your touch. And obviously paired with that Snapdragon 888, this is gonna breeze through anything you throw at it. And while it's not the super duper latest 888 Plus, that's really only about 5% faster and not something you really need. So with the M11T Pro, we're getting Android 11 out of the box and naturally their MIUI skin on top. Now my only complaint really is the crazy amount of bloatware pre-installed, although you can hide or remove most of these. But on the whole, I do quite like the software. You get the Google News Feed left of the home screen, Xiaomi's unique looking vertical recently used apps menu. There's a good amount of customization, including lots of AI image enhancements if you want sharper and more vibrant photos and videos. But most importantly, it feels fast and responsive. Okay, let's talk about this camera. And the main lens is using Samsung's ISOCELL HM2 sensor, just like the flagship Mi 11 Ultra. It is 108 megapixels, but it uses pixel bending, so we end up with sharper 27 megapixel shots. Now, if we bring in the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which to be fair, does cost twice as much, you can see actually uh, image quality is quite similar until we get into that zoom where, well, the S21 blows it away. But in terms of overall detail, I would probably say the S21 looks a touch more natural with the 11T Pro, often going for a more vibrant and punchy look. 
There are some subtle differences in dynamic range and colour, but on the whole, considering, as I say, the Samsung costs twice as much, the 11T Pro does a really good job. Up front, we have a 16 megapixel selfie camera, which I must admit I found a bit inconsistent. In the right lighting, it nails it, but other times it does look quite flat and also over sharpened. And that's despite turning off all the beauty modes and filters. Switching over to video and we can shoot it up to 8K, although as you can see, it's not stabilized. So most of the time I'm recording at 4K 30 and the video looks great. It does a pretty good job of smoothing out my footsteps. And so on the whole, I would say video quality is very good. So the big question, should you buy the 11T Pro? Which I keep wanting to say me 11T Pro, but they've dropped that me name. Um, and I would say, yeah. Actually, for £600, this is a very good phone, and I think it's an easy recommendation. Couple of downsides. Firstly, I don't think you'll be able to buy this in the US, which is a shame. Also, it would have been nice if we had a 3.5mm headphone jack, and also a micro SD card, which this doesn't have. And also, this design, as I say, in this meteorite grey isn't the most exciting, and also does get very fingerprinty, as you might be able to see there. Now versus something like the OnePlus 9, which has very similar specs and also a very similar price, it's a tough one. I would probably go with OnePlus just because I prefer the Oxygen OS software, although I would say the camera on this is a little bit better, uh, but there's not a whole lot between them. I think the bigger issue about whether you should buy this is actually Xiaomi's own competition they've made, the Poco F3, which I reviewed I think back in March. I still maintain is one of the best budget phones of the year. We get the Snapdragon 870, which is almost as fast as the 888, as well as that 120 hertz AMOLED screen. The camera isn't quite as good, but it is more than half the price of this. Or is it less than half the price? It's like 280 pounds, this is 600. So actually, I think maybe the Poco is still a better option if you are on a tighter budget, but certainly versus something like the Mi 11 Ultra, which is like over a thousand pounds, I think this is a much better buy. So if you do fancy checking it out, I will leave a link in the description below. I believe Xiaomi are also running a £50 off pre-order deal, at least until the end of September, so that's probably worth checking out. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy one of these? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, which hopefully you did, and I'm guessing you did if you watched the whole thing, um, a cheeky little like and subscribe below would be lovely. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.